Later years after Wardenclyffe closed, Tesla continued to write to Morgan. After, the great man, died, Tesla wrote to Morgan's son Jack, trying to get further funding for the project. In 1906, Tesla opened offices at 165 Broadway in Manhattan, trying to raise further funds by developing and marketing his patents. He went on to have offices at the Metropolitan Life Tower from 1910 to 1914, rented for a few months at the Woolworth Building, moving out because he could not afford the rent, and then to office space at 8 West 40th Street from 1915 to 1925. After moving to 8 West 40th Street, he was effectively bankrupt. Most of his patents had run out and he was having trouble with the new inventions he was trying to develop. Bladeless Turbine being awarded to William Henry Bragg and Lawrence Bragg, for their services in the analysis of crystal structure by means of X-rays, there were unsubstantiated rumors at the time that either Tesla or Edison had refused the prize. The Nobel Foundation said, any rumor that a person has not been given a Nobel Prize because he has made known his intention to refuse the reward is ridiculous. A recipient could decline a Nobel Prize only after he is announced a winner. There have been subsequent claims by Tesla biographers that Edison and Tesla were the original recipients and that neither was given the award because of their animosity toward each other, that each sought to minimize the other's achievements and right to win the award that both refused ever to accept the award if the other received it first, that both rejected any possibility of sharing it, and even that a wealthy Edison refused it to keep Tesla from getting the $20,000 prize money. In the years after these rumors, neither Tesla nor Edison won a Nobel Prize, although Edison received one of 38 possible bids in 1915 and Tesla received one of 38 possible bids in 1937. Other awards, Patents and ideas Tesla won numerous medals and awards over this time. They include, Grand Officer of the Order of St. Sava, Serbia, 1892, Elliott Cresson Medal, Franklin Institute, USA, 1894, Grand Cross of the Order of Prince Danilo I, Montenegro, 1895, AIEE Edison Medal, Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, USA, 1916, Grand Cross of the Order of St. Sava, Yugoslavia, 1926, Cross of the Order of the Yugoslav Crown, Yugoslavia, 1931, John Scott Medal, Franklin Institute and Philadelphia City Council, USA, 1934, Order of the White Eagle, Yugoslavia, 1936, Grand Cross of the Order of the White Lion, Czechoslovakia, 1937, Medal of the University of Paris, Paris, France, 1937, the Medal of the University Street Clement of Ocreda, Sofia, Bulgaria, 1939, Tesla attempted to market several devices based on the production of ozone. These included his 1900 Tesla Ozone Company selling an 1896 patented device based on his Tesla coil, used to bubble ozone through different types of oils to make a therapeutic gel. He also tried to develop a variation of this a few years later as a room sanitizer for hospitals. Tesla theorized that the application of electricity to the brain enhanced intelligence. In 1912, he crafted a plan to make dull students bright by saturating them unconsciously with electricity, wiring the walls of a schoolroom and saturating the schoolroom with infinitesimal electric waves vibrating at high frequency. The whole room will thus, Mr. Tesla claims, be converted into a health-giving and stimulating electromagnetic field or bath. The plan was at least provisionally, approved by then superintendent of New York City schools, William H. Maxwell. Before World War I, Tesla sought overseas investors. After the war started, Tesla lost the funding he was receiving from his patents in European countries. In the August 1917 edition of the magazine Electrical Experimenter, Tesla postulated that electricity could be used to locate submarines via using the reflection of an electric ray of tremendous frequency, with the signal being viewed on a fluorescent screen, a system that has been noted to have a superficial resemblance to modern radar.
Tesla was incorrect in his assumption that high-frequency radio waves would penetrate water. Emile Gerardo, who helped develop France's first radar system in the 1930s, noted in 1953 that Tesla's general speculation that a very strong high-frequency signal would be needed was correct. Gerardo said, Tesla, was prophesying or dreaming, since he had at his disposal no means of carrying him out, but one must add that if he was dreaming, at least he was dreaming correctly. In 1928, Tesla received patent, U.S. Patent 1,655,114, for a biplane design capable of vertical takeoff and landing, VTOL, which, gradually tilted through manipulation of the elevator devices, in flight, until it was flying like a conventional plane. This impractical design was something Tesla thought, thought would sell for less than $1,000. Tesla had a further office at 350 Madison Avenue, but by 1928 he no longer had a laboratory or funding. Living circumstances Tesla lived at the Waldorf Astoria in New York City from 1900 and ran up a large bill. He moved to the St. Regis Hotel in 1922 and followed a pattern from then on of moving to a different hotel every few years and leaving unpaid bills behind. Tesla walked to the park every day to feed the pigeons. He began feeding them at the window of his hotel room and nursed injured birds back to health. He said that he had been visited by a certain injured white pigeon daily. He spent over $2,000 to care for the bird, including a device he built to support her comfortably while her broken wing and leg healed. Tesla stated, Tesla's unpaid bills, as well as complaints about the mess made by pigeons, led to his eviction from St. Regis in 1923. He was also forced to leave the Hotel Pennsylvania in 1930 and the Hotel Governor Clinton in 1934. At one point he also took rooms at the Hotel Marguerite. Tesla moved to the Hotel New Yorker in 1934. At this time Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company began paying him $125 per month, in addition to paying his rent. Accounts of how this came about vary. Several sources claim that Westinghouse was concerned, or possibly warned, about potential bad publicity arising from the impoverished conditions in which their former star inventor was living. The payment has been described as being couched as a consulting fee to get around Tesla's aversion to accepting charity. Tesla biographer Mark Seifer described the Westinghouse payments as a type of unspecified settlement. In any case, Westinghouse provided the funds for Tesla for the rest of his life. Birthday press conferences in 1931, a young journalist whom Tesla befriended, Kenneth M. Sweezy, organized a celebration for the inventor's 75th birthday. Tesla received congratulations from figures in science and engineering such as Albert Einstein, and he was also featured on the cover of Time magazine. The cover caption, All the World's His Powerhouse, noted his contribution to electrical power generation. The party went so well that Tesla made it an annual event, an occasion where he would put out a large spread of food and drink, featuring dishes of his own creation. He invited the press in order to see his inventions and hear stories about his past exploits, views on current events, and sometimes baffling claims. At the 1932 party, Tesla claimed he had invented a motor that would run on cosmic rays. In 1933 at age 77, Tesla told reporters at the event that, after 35 years of work, he was on the verge of producing proof of a new form of energy. He claimed it was a theory of energy that was, violently opposed, to Einsteinian physics and could be tapped with an apparatus that would be cheap to run and last 500 years. He also told reporters he was working on a way to transmit individualized private radio wavelengths, working on breakthroughs in metallurgy, and developing a way to photograph the retina to record thought. At the 1934 occasion, Tesla told reporters he had designed a superweapon he claimed would end all war. He called it, Teleforce, but was usually referred to as his death ray. 
Tesla described it as a defensive weapon that would be put up along the border of a country and be used against attacking ground-based infantry or aircraft. Tesla never revealed detailed plans of how the weapon worked during his lifetime, but, in 1984, they surfaced at the Nikola Tesla Museum archive in Belgrade. The treatise, The New Art of Projecting Concentrated Non-Dispersive Energy Through the Natural Media, described an open-ended vacuum tube with a gas jet seal that allows particles to exit, a method of charging slugs of tungsten or mercury to millions of volts, and directing them in streams, through electrostatic repulsion. Tesla tried to attract interest of the US War Department, United Kingdom, Soviet Union, and Yugoslavia in the device. In 1935 at his 79th birthday party, Tesla covered many topics. He claimed to have discovered the cosmic ray in 1896 and invented a way to produce direct current by induction, and made many claims about his mechanical oscillator. Describing the device, which he expected would earn him $100 million within two years, he told reporters that a version of his oscillator had caused an earthquake in his 46 East Houston Street lab and neighboring streets in Lower Manhattan in 1898. He went on to tell reporters his oscillator could destroy the Empire State Building with five pounds of air pressure. He also explained a new technique he developed using his oscillators he called Telegeodynamics, using it to transmit vibrations into the ground that he claimed would work over any distance to be used for communication or locating underground mineral deposits. In his 1937 Grand Ballroom of Hotel New Yorker event, Tesla received the Order of the White Lion from the Czechoslovak Ambassador and a medal from the Yugoslav Ambassador. On questions concerning the death ray, Tesla stated, but it is not an experiment. I have built, demonstrated and used it. Only a little time will pass before I can give it to the world.